Okay, we are going to talk today about uh, getting a haircut. Some of you um, might need a haircut. Some of you might never need a haircut. Um, I'd like to explain, though, that in the Bible, um, kind of like the Nazarite process, what they would do all the way back in Deuteronomy is that they would make a vow by cutting their hair off. They would cut their hair off, and they would take it, and they would go to the uh, the altar where they were burning the offerings, and they would throw the hair not on the altar, but under the altar where the fire was. and That was part of their vow to show their dedication to the Lord. Now, I want you to see that the Apostle Paul, if you don't learn anything else today, I want you to understand this. Paul had short hair, okay? And it was because he kept on making a vow over and over again to show his obedience and his dedication to the Lord. In the book of Acts chapter 17, or 18, I'm sorry, it's where we will start at today. And what I want you to understand is that Paul had been traveling around and he had gone to the city of Corinth and while he was there, he was speaking to the folks and he was telling them the, the Word of God, the truth of the Word of God, and, and the people were not accepting it very well. Um, they were... They were getting angry at him about it. They were not receiving the truth very well because it was convicting them. It was making them feel um, a little, I guess, just guilty about the way that they were living their lives. And it says that you know he got so upset that he just shook his clothes out and he said, "Well, your blood just be on your own heads. You know, you got to answer for this." And he just felt like he couldn't do anything with them. These folks were not only mad, but they wanted to kill Paul. So one night, verse number 9 says, the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. And Jesus said to Paul, Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent. For I am with you, and no one is going to attack and harm you, because I have many people in this city. So it says that Paul stayed in Corinth for a year and a half. After... He had shaken his clothes out and given up and told the people, I can't preach to you. I can't talk to you. You're not taking this. You're not changing. This is doing no good. He still stayed for a year and a half because Jesus told him to. He said, don't be afraid. So he stayed and he talked in the Word of God, but the people were, they were pretty upset. They were so upset, it says here that they... Um, while this guy named Gallio was the kind of like the governor, he was the pro council of that area. It said the Jews of Corinth made a united attack on Paul and brought him to the place of judgment. And they charged him. They said, "This man is persuading the people to worship God in ways that are contrary to the law." Just as Paul was about to speak, Gallio. <laughs> He said, if you Jews were making a complaint about some misdemeanor or serious crime, it would be reasonable for me to listen to you. But since it involves questions about words and names and your own law, you settle it yourselves. I will not be a judge of such things. So he drove them off. Then the crowd there, they turned on Sosthenes, the synagogue leader, and they beat him in front of the proconsul. The governor and Gallio, he showed no concern whatsoever. He did not care. It wasn't his issue. It wasn't his matter. He was a Roman governor. He did not care about the Jews. Paul was preaching to the Jews. They didn't care about the word. Y'all see that there is a severe lack of caring going on here. Paul said, I can't preach to y'all. I'm just going to shake off my clothes and, and, and go somewhere else. You'll be guilty of your own sin. It was so much just apathy, not caring. Well, Paul stayed on in Corinth for some time. Then he left the brothers and sisters and sailed for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. But before he sailed, he had his hair cut off. 
because of a vow that he had taken. Now, I got to wondering, why did Paul get a haircut before he took off? Was that custom? No. Maybe it was hot where he was going. and You know, he just wanted to cool off. I like to get my hair cut shorter in the summertime because of the, the hot coming out. Yeah, me and Tim both. And <laughs> that wasn't it either. It said that he got his hair cut because of a vow he had taken. So what kind of vow did he take? So I got to looking at this vow, and the vow that, that people would take with cutting their hair was to show their level of obedience and dedication. Have you ever made a promise to God? And maybe a deal, maybe you made a deal with God. Maybe you were going through something that was so bad that you promised God, God, if you get me out of this, if you fix this, then I will do this. That's making a vow. That's making a promise. God, if you will let me live to this age, I will serve you all that time. Because you don't want to die. So you make a deal with God. God, if you will save me from my sins and let me go to heaven, I will serve you the rest of my time. God, if you will do the preaching, then I will be the preacher. All these vows and deals you can make with God. Well, Paul made a vow. And the thing about him cutting his hair was it was a vow so that everyone would know just from looking at him that he made that vow. See, what makes you look different as a Christian? When you get saved, what, what looks different about you? Maybe you don't have a cigarette hanging out of your mouth or maybe you don't have a beer bottle in your hand. You know, what looks different about you since you are a Christian? You know, Maybe you don't wear marijuana t-shirts anymore. You know, maybe maybe all your hair is one color. I don't know. Maybe maybe you feel like you need to look a certain way. Somebody asked me one time, a little kid did, like, why why do you uh, have to dress up to go to church? I said, because you give God your best. And if you're going to worship God, then you want to give Him your best. You want to look nice. You don't want to just be all scraggly going to worship God. That don't go. You should want to give God your best. Just like the first fruits of your offering, would well, you give Him the best in your appearance? Take a bath. Comb your hair. You know. And sometimes, shave your head. Paul shaved his head because of a vow he had taken. Let me tell you what the vow was. There was another instance in uh, the book of Acts where in chapter 21, where Paul shaved his head again. All right? And it was the same kind of vow. Look over in Acts 21, starting in verse 23. Now, Paul was, <laughs> he was kind of in trouble again for preaching the word. And the reason why is because of his past life. He was going around as a Pharisee, persecuting people that were Christians, and those folks were, um, the ones that he persecuted were not very receptive of him when he started preaching on behalf of Jesus. And the people that he turned away from, they were not very receptive of him because they looked at him as a traitor. So Paul wasn't really liked by anybody. Okay, Now it says here, after he had went to Jerusalem and they had been informed about everything that had been going on and there was a lot of folks that were upset at him, there were four men, this is in verse number 23, there are four men with us who have made a vow. Okay? So they had four, I believe that they were uh, Gentile men that were not living according to the Jewish law, so they had made a vow. They had made a vow that they were indeed going to be um, obedient to the law to God's ways. It says, take these men, join in their purification rites, and pay their expenses so that they can have their heads shaved. Then everyone will know that there is no truth in these reports about you, but that you yourself are living in obedience to the law. So by shaving his head, 
He was taking a vow, just like these four other men were, and Paul had to pay for the haircut. But in doing this, this purification rite, by showing everybody that you were dedicated to the Lord, you would shave your head off, and everybody would see your shiny golden dome. And they would know that you were dedicated to God. Just from looking at you, they could see you were dedicated to God, you were obedient to the law, you were doing what you were supposed to do. And I think that that is great. Why do you think Lifeway sells so many Jesus bumper stickers? Hmm? Or Jesus t-shirts? Shirts with Bible verses on them and stuff like that. It's you making a vow, I'm a Christian. So we can wear all of that stuff. We can put that stuff on our vehicles, you know? You want to shave your head? And people are like, why is your head shaved? I'm a Christian. I'm doing it to show that I'm obedient to the Lord. I'm taking a Nazarite vow, just like, uh, just like Paul did, just like the Old Testament folks did. It's a vow. I'm vowing to stay obedient and, and dedicated to my God. And they'll be like, what kind of church do you go to? We're Southern Baptist. Okay. Look, some of you guys have shaved heads, or shorter hair. All right. Um, what about the ladies? How hard would it be, ladies, for you to shave your head? I'm talking about Sinead O'Connor. You, y'all remember who that is? People would look at you. People would look at you funny. You would look at yourself funny. You would feel weird. I have shaved my head before. This was back in the Goldberg WCW days. I like Goldberg. I had never shaved my head, so I come home from work one night and told Alicia, let's shave my head. She was like, all right. We shaved my head. Y'all, we shaved it with the clippers, and then we got the razor. We went slick smooth, and it was weird. I got a lot of little fat craters in my head that were normally hidden by hair I didn't know about. They were uncovered. I mean, it looked, y'all ever seen the moon when it's full? It's got all them spots. That's what it was like. I can feel it now, so I don't want to uncover that. It was weird looking. But if God called me to do that, to make a vow, to show people that I was dedicated to Him, that would be a serious undertaking, wouldn't it? What if God called you to make a vow that, that was, it could bring you shame or ridicule or humiliation. It could cause people to call you names or something like that. You might be uh, made fun of. I mean, not all of us can rock a, a Derrick Henry hairline. You know, his hairline starts like right here. But he can pick up a truck. Anyway, what keeps us from making a dedication, uh, a vow? What, what keeps us from being that level of obedient to God? And what I come up with was, it's fear. Fear is what keeps us from having the level of obedience that Paul had. Paul was obedient to the Lord. He went where God called him to go, and when he was there, he was preaching the Word of God. Because y'all, that's what we are all supposed to do. That's what we're all taught to do. We, we, are, we are given the opportunity to do it. Wherever you go, whatever you're doing, it needs to be done for the glory of God. So if you are going to work, you're going to work for the glory of God. Let everything you do, do it as though you're doing it unto the Lord. So everything you're doing, if you're working on an on a hourly wage and you're going to work, well, you do that job for the glory of God as if you're working for Jesus and you will be glorifying God by what you're doing there. All right? If you're being a, a husband or a wife, you, you do it the best it did, you using your God-given ability to do it. If you are a child, that means you've got a mama and daddy somewhere. You be the best kid you can be. That means you be obedient, you be respectful, you be loving and kind, you clean up after yourself. 
And don't make them tell you twice or three times or eight times because that is air that they need to function with like feeding their head instead of wasting it on telling you the same thing over and over. All right? We've all got ways that we can be better, a standard. And Paul was living up to it. He was so dedicated that he shaved his head. Would you make a vow with me today? I'm going to be better. You can read in your Bibles where God tells you to do everything you do like you're doing it unto the Lord. Um, but I can't find the words where it says to, to do your best. But over and over I find where God teaches that we are to do better. See, sometimes the fear of failure creates lofty expectations and we give up before we even get started. We're like, I can't do that. God wants you to just do better than you did. Be better than you were. And don't be afraid of failure. Now, let's go back. Let's go back to the first verse. Acts 18.9 The Lord spoke to Paul and the first thing that he said to him was, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking and do not be silent. You hear that? You just keep on speaking. Keep on doing. When you shaved your head back in that day, you were preaching without opening your mouth. People could see that you had a level of dedication, a level of obedience, just from looking at your shiny noggin. Can people see that level of dedication in your life without you talking? Brother Mac told me long ago, he said, you witness to this world every chance you get, and if you absolutely have to, open your mouth. Being a witness for the Lord is like taking a vow, and God, use me. He's already saved you. He's already given you the gift of the presence of the Holy Spirit. And with His Holy Spirit, He has brought with Him a spiritual gift to use in your own particular ministry. What is it? What's going on? Sometimes the key to unlocking that is just a level of dedication. I'm going to be better than I was. I'm going to do better than I was. I'm going to try harder than I did. Things are going to be better. What can I do? Right now, I've already asked the Holy Spirit to show us today one thing that we can change, one thing we can do better. Maybe a fresh new vow, a, a new thing that He's wanting to bring out of you or, or to place in your life that's something that can make your life better and glorify God in the process. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? He will tell you, just like He told Paul, do not be afraid. Just keep on speaking. Do not be silent. I will protect you. Nothing will harm you. I am with you. No one's going to attack you. No one is going to harm you because I have people around you. Okay. So I can give it a shot. And even if I fail, even if I fall flat on my face because I don't know what I'm doing, God's got people around me to pick me up. That's called a church. We can work together. We can be better. We can do more. We can, we can make a vow today that we are going to glorify God. We are not going to let Satan get into our church and, and we're not going to let a, a virus or, or anything else come between us and God. We are going to be dedicated to the Lord. We, we have gone through VBS. Now we're going to have homecoming, hopefully some folks will come back to church and they will see man, the church is dedicated I want to be dedicated like they are look at all them bald heads hmm. what's up with y'all I've seen baseball teams that grow their beards out I feel sorry for the little ones that they ain't got no face growing abilities so some of them will dye their hair blonde who did that this past Was it LSU did that? Dyed the hair blonde? A couple years ago? I think it was one this year too. But it's a unity thing. 
Well, back in the Bible times, they'd shaved their heads. They didn't have a lot of hair dye, I reckon. What is God calling you to do? Some of y'all come in here with a shaved head, I ain't going to be surprised. I'll be like, mm, I hear you. Way to go. <laughs> well, what's he calling you to do? Well, now's the time to respond. You make a vow today. Pray, God, please give me the strength to carry this through. Help me to change. Help me to be who it is you want me to be. And just be better than you were. All right? Let's stand. Now's the time for us to pray.